Today we're going to be looking at some of the tools that we can use to measure the mass of objects. We talked about how mass just essentially tells us the amount of matter, the amount of atoms and molecules that make up an object. So I've got a couple different objects we'll be measuring today. I just picked up a couple parts I'd made on the 3D printer. I've got a 3D printed ball and I've got a saber tooth cat skull. So these will give us some decent size objects here that we can measure the mass of. And in order to measure these objects, we've got some different tools that we're going to be using. Uh, again, I'm going to show you three different ways to use tools to measure the mass of objects. The first here is what's called a balance scale, and we'll show you how to use that. The second tool here in the center is our triple beam balance. And then our third is just a simple digital scale. So we'll be kind of comparing the strategies for measuring mass using all three of these different devices. And we'll talk about advantages and disadvantages of each. When we talk about measuring mass in grams, I also have just a small little metal piece here. Just very tiny, very lightweight, but this is a one gram weight. Again, we said that a gram is about the weight of a paper clip, so if that gives you any kind of idea of just how small a gram is, again, that's the unit of measure that we use in terms of scientific measurements, is grams, kilograms, which would be a thousand grams, and so forth. So let's take a look at the different scales that we'll be using to do our mass measurements. The first tool that we're going to use for our mass measurement is what's called a balance scale. And the reason we call it a balance scale is because when the scale is balanced, the amount of mass on both sides are the same. One neat thing about the balance scale is we can use it to compare two objects. For example, I have the 3D printed ball and the 3D printed saber tooth skull. If we want to see which of these objects has more mass, I can put one on each side of the scale. And it works about like a seesaw. It just will go down if more mass is on one side. So we can see from this that because the yellow side goes down, the side with the ball, the ball has more mass than the skull. So that's one neat thing about the balance scale is it actually lets us very quickly and very easily compare the mass of two objects. We can also use this to actually measure the mass of an object, but this is a little more complicated. In order to do this, we need a set of weights. And I have my set right here. It's got all sorts of different masses, everything from a fraction of a gram up to the largest, which is 100 grams. So in order to measure the mass of an object, I think we'll do our 3D printed ball on this. We would set the ball on one side of the scale, and then we would add mass to the other side of the scale until the scale is balanced. So, for instance, if I put my 100 gram weight on, the green side, the side with the ball, is still down lower, which means it's not balanced yet. We could try adding another 50 grams to this and see what happens. But you see when I add that, that's too much mass and it actually goes to the other side. So after trying a few different combinations of weights on the scale, you can see now that my scale is balanced. The arrow in the front is right directly vertical in the center. And in order to know the mass of the object, all I have to do is count up the mass that I've added to it. So right here, I've got my 100 gram weight, I've got my 2 gram weight, and that was enough to balance the scale, so we know that the mass of the ball is about 102 grams. That's how we use the balance scale to measure the mass of objects, as well as to use it to compare the mass of two different objects. The second type of tool that we're going to look at for measuring mass is what's called a triple beam balance. And it's very similar to the balance scale, except you notice on this it only has one tray to put objects on, and then it has some weights that we can slide along that actually serve to balance out the scale. So as we slide these weights, that'll allow us to see the mass of the object based on what we have to slide in order to balance out the scale. And just to show you how this works, we'll use the 3D printed skull for this. And I'm going to put that on the pan there, and you can see immediately the balance is up at the top now, saying that this side's heavier. So again, just like adding the weights to the balance scale, we want to slide the weights on here to try to get that center out to balance right in the center, letting us know the mass of the object. And of course, always when adding weights, start with the heavier and work to lighter. You know, if we start with the really light, the one gram, we might slide it all the way, but that might not be enough to balance it. So we're going to go ahead and start with 100 grams, and let's just see if that's enough or if that's too much. And when we slide our sliders on the triple beam balance, we want to go all the way so that this arrow is pointing at the number. But you can see when I put it on 100 grams, that's too much, because now the balance scale or the triple beam balance is off balance 
saying that this side is now heavier. So let's try a smaller amount. We can do 10 grams at a time and just slide it until it starts to go down, letting us know that we're getting close to our weight. Okay, so when we add 60 grams, that's enough to make it move a little, but not all the way. Let's try 70, but you can see that's too much. So we'll take it back to 60, and now we'll go to our smallest unit of single grams here. So each number on here only represents one gram of mass. So we can very carefully slide this to see what we have to get to in order to balance our scale. The last type of scale we're going to look at is what's called our digital scale. And this one in the science lab when we're measuring out chemicals or just want to quickly find the mass of an object is certainly the easiest. And as we look at it, it's got a little digital display. You can see when we turn it on. And the key to using a digital scale is making sure before anything goes on it that the scale is zero, just like we would with the balance or the triple beam balance. And we also want to make sure that our unit on this scale is reading in grams. That's what the little G's for on there. So all we have to do is take our object, and we'll use this 3D printed butterfly here, place it on the scale, and it'll tell us the mass of the object. So by looking at our screen on here, we can see that the mass of the butterfly is 22.8 grams. So again, a quick, an easy, a simple way to do measurements, particularly if you're measuring chemicals, maybe we need 10 grams of baking soda for a science experiment. Always remember before you put your thing on that you want to weigh, before you want to measure the mass, always make sure that it's zeroed. And that particularly comes into play when we're measuring chemicals. For instance, if I wanted to measure out two grams of salt, I can't just pour the salt on top of the plate on the scale. I would want to have something to put it in. So we have these little weighing boats here. I can add my weighing boat to the scale. But you notice that the weighing boat, even though it's very light, it has some mass. So we have what's called our tear button. If we push that, that zeroes the scale with whatever's on it at the time. And that's very important if I want to measure out exactly two grams of a chemical. I can zero my scale with my weighing boat on. Then I can add my chemical to the weighing boat. And it'll only add the new mass that's added from the salt that I'm putting in it. And we can add or remove a little bit of a chemical from our weighing boat until we have exactly the two grams of salt that we needed to do our lab with. So that's the use of the digital scale, and that's going to be very important in some of the science labs that we'll be doing this year. So today we've looked at three different tools that we can use in science class to do our mass measurements with. We've looked at the balance scale, we've looked at the triple beam balance, and we've looked at the digital scale. And after seeing how they're used and seeing what they can be used for, it's always important to know to choose the right tool for the job.